Bullshit, the controller pack's full. Um. One second. Swap controller packs. Hello, everybody. Uh, today, we are not that one. Go with this one. So today, we're doing a game that I, uh, I'm actually been really excited to start playing. And it is the first Turok Dinosaur Hunter. Should be good. Reset it again. Um, this is going to be one of those games that I actually like have a like definite start and finish and everything to it. However, uh, as I mentioned in the last video when I was doing FIFA and telling you how I was getting ready to do Turok, um, Turok's... It's not that, like, how do I put this? Turok is, uh, it's just very demanding. It's one of a few games so far that I'm going to say is very demanding. Um, it's not too much trouble, usually. Um, however, I still am going to put the, the cheat in um, so that we can kind of go through this. I've never, I've almost never played Turok without using the cheats, and we're gonna start off uh, with the the big cheat basically and turn shit off and have fun basically. I'm gonna try and start and go through it as much as I can from start to finish, and obviously take a lot of time to do you know what has to be done on my own. But for the most part, I'm gonna try and like just go through the levels and then uh, on my own time go back and do the things that are really demanding that will get me to the next level which is finding all the keys which is basically to say that you can go and play Turok and have a lot of fun with it get to the end of the level and realize that you have to go back and play the level again because you really need to go everywhere and do everything um, so I'm entering the big sheet so that I'm basically gonna play with god mode which I've almost never played without. Uh, it's not to say that it's I wouldn't be able to do it, uh, but for the sake of you know doing a let's play, I don't feel I don't exactly feel guilty about uh, playing with invincibility on in this game. Uh, basic, there's only there's only 16 characters that they let you choose from from this thing. There's no vowels. And uh, some of the cheat codes, there's a lot of different cheat codes, um, but this one pretty much unlocks most of them. And what it's supposed to say, I don't know what a lot of the other ones say, like I know the pen and ink mode is... No, that's not the one I know. Disco mode, disco mode is, is like Saturday Night Fever or something like that. Um, but this is supposed to say, on the 8th day, God created Turok without any vowels created I'm trying to look at this stupid thing TRK on the eighth day God created truck boom the big cheat this book that I have here this is what's gonna help me sort of I'm not gonna use it too much while I'm playing it streaming because that would be really tedious and I'm gonna have to keep going going looking at it but this is what's going to make sure that I play this game properly and complete it is just this little shitty Prima book from 96, 97 um, you can tell that this is made kind of hastily and everything because um, for one thing you can see this as like Super Mario World 64 it's not the best thing but I want to show you that I have this I, I like shit like this because it's not really expensive it's just it's it's super dumb but in this case it's actually gonna come in handy because I need I need it uh, for when I'm playing my own time so we'll just put that aside for now and go to the cheat menu fucking one too many doesn't matter you can do it from the pause menu cheat menu so we do invincibility on all weapons on and unlimited ammo on and it, infinite lives for good measure too because there's a lot of uh, falling deaths that you can get to so you can see that here um, I'm not even going to turn all map on um, 
because the map in this the map in this game I'll show you when I get it you know a lot of it move through but the map in this game can be helpful but it also takes up a lot of the screen um, for the most part I would just prefer not to play with the map on for this um, and then you can warp there's only eight levels but they're very 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 large levels and like I said you have to find the keys and the pieces of the chrono scepter in the levels the chrono scepter is a big part of the story in this game um, within the levels as you're going through them and it's very very difficult if you're not 100% paying attention so um all right to remind myself exactly the controls yeah I got this um yeah I'm gonna try not to use a lot of the weapons uh, that I wouldn't have yet or that I at least I'm completely positive that I wouldn't have yet I'm gonna kind of kind of go through the game the way I remember going through it from those times when I wasn't using the cheats and how how the designers intend for you to play this game but Turok is a super important game to me because this game taught me how to play first person shooters um, and what that means is that uh, I can't play first person shooters with my friends without them getting really annoyed at me right off the bat because anytime I play a first person shooter I didn't know any different I all I have to have the Y axis inverted see this is where you go and you get the pistol it gives me the pistol you saw the clips down there when I went in the water um, but I didn't know to question it I played a ton of Star Fox and I played a ton of Turok on the N64 those are two of the games that I played the most as a kid and the y-axis is just inverted, that's how it is. Uh, so, I just kind of did that forever. I, I can't do it the, the normal way, I can't do it the standard way anymore. Since I was probably like six years old, yes, I, I was like six years old playing this game. I could not learn to do it the other way. So, and I mean, I didn't play Goldeneye either, really. This is one of those things that's super helpful to you when you're, you know, not playing with the cheats and trying to have fun. Uh, those things, you just shoot them as many times as you can. They put out the little two health things. The thing about the two health and the, the little health is that that's the way that you get more than 100% health. You can't do it with 25 or with, obviously with full health. Yeah, I remember, and I, I swear to God, I remember the first time that I saw that thing coming at me. That was like one of the coolest things. This, the distance fog, which obviously we have a lot of distance fog because it's the N64. It's actually, in my opinion, is really helpful in the atmosphere of this game because it should have a lot of, you know, mystery to it. But uh, that thing just like started coming at me. I didn't know what it was. I realized as soon as I like panicked and started shooting it that it is a it's a big raptor and that was me shooting a dinosaur and when I was a kid and like a lot of kids I love dinosaurs I don't think it really affected me wanting to play this game because I knew it was a game and I was the dinosaurs were gonna kill me otherwise but yeah I think is that where you get the automatic shotgun up there I'm trying not to get too far ahead of myself, but by the end of this level, you should have uh, both shotguns. So I want to be able to use them because the automatic shotgun is fucking badass. Chick print. So um, I like I said, I hadn't played Goldeneye. I never played Goldeneye until I was like, uh. Jeez, when did I play Goldeneye for the first time? When I was a teenager, like a lot of games that people really remember well from from when they were kids are, are games that I really didn't play till I was a teenager and I was collecting for the system again. And like, when I'll talk about Goldeneye more when I'm playing Goldeneye, but I remember like the boar too. There's the boar. It's a lot like the little uh, deer thing that I was shooting earlier. Yeah. So there's the uh, shotgun need to get like a running start and grab it so now I have the shotgun I don't know if I had the automatic shotgun anyway because I can't remember if I just I don't think I just grabbed it earlier I think it was somewhere up there oh portal no it oh, oh okay yeah this is little like bonus stages that 
you go through those portals. I, uh, I don't know if I ever learned what made those things appear. Or if there was anything that made them appear, if it was just that. Ah! Fuck away from me. Yes. So yeah, you can see as, you know, it's a shotgun, it's kind of slow. Automatic shotgun is, you know, automatic. It, you can just pump away with that thing. Where the fuck did he go? There he is. Yeah. Make sure... Yeah, running speed. Okay. The only thing that the uh, D-pad is good for in this game is to change between walking and running. So, which is like when you're on a, like a narrow path, like that ladder I was on before, it's entirely possible that you'd want to use the walking speed. But that's all the D-pad's good for. But for these, like, you pretty much need to get a running start on all these platforms, and it's also tough because you can't see where the ground ends, like in most, any first person shooter, so. Uh, some of the platforming can be difficult, but it's not as, it's not broken or anything like that, I actually, it's a, it's a nice touch because a lot of the things that this game does, it's, you know it needs to be different than Doom, because most first person shooters were just copying Doom as much as they could. Oh, the tech arrows are beautiful. Love tech arrows. Fuck you. This is when it, like, the pace starts to step up because you need to avoid that shockwave and shoot the tech arrows. As you can see, the, the normal bow and arrow is super useless. Uh, oh, I don't, I don't think... Can you switch between them? The thing is, you, I don't think you can switch between them at will because you wouldn't want to. It's just like if you ran out of tech arrows, then they would put you back to normal bow and arrow. And the normal bow and arrow sucks, so you would pretty much just switch away as soon as you use them all up. So in case uh, you're waiting for me to finish talking about uh, the controls, the monkeys, when you shoot them, don't give you anything. They just kind of run away. Portal. Cool shit. So yeah, this is kind of like the... This is like a little uh, obstacle course type of... Things, little challenges that they transport you off to with those portals and they can give you the life force gems which is what these yellow triangles are on the ground there's also purple ones that are worth more um, so like when you get a hundred of those you get another life or you know you can just get sent back here because you missed hey you got a shotgun too um, so the buttons are the C buttons are your movement, and the analog stick is your uh, viewpoint. So, like, left, C left and C right would be strafing, and you know, the up and down is your Y axis, the left and right is your X axis, and then you look around with the control stick. So, it, you know, was pretty much the early way of teaching me how to do two stick controls because I don't know if I pretty sure I didn't play any like analog stick using first person shooters on the PlayStation 1 at any time around this because this is obviously I, I said this is definitely the first time I ever played a first person shooter was this game this game taught me to how that sort of like separate hand motion thing works um, I forgot I got the camera working again, so you can actually see my hand if I put it up the right way. Because I know I was operating without the hands. So these little pedestals are your save things, and I am going to save. Not that it really makes a huge difference when you have the cheat entered, because you can just warp around. But the levels are so big, it's not like you can warp around within a level. If you wanted to, you know, play by the rules and everything and still unlock all the keys, you'd still have to start from the beginning of a level and, you know, start off on your way and going through all those stupid, not stupid, but all the little portals and everything, the very easy to get lost and very easy to miss shit. So these things that I can't pick up right now are, uh, or I won't ever be able to pick up on this video. Those are grenades, which I always wanted to know how how do I use that because there's no like way to switch the grenades. It, eventually I found a point 
like, oh, a first person shooter, you can use grenades. God damn it, I'm in the lava. Not that it matters. But eventually, yeah, I was like, found out in a first person shooter, you can just have a button for grenades. Fucking. Uh, and I always wanted to switch to the grenades or do something like that. And then when I found out that there was G, basically the grenades are for the grenade launcher, which is a weapon that you get later on. And then the grenade launcher to me is not that effective because it's so uncontrollable, like a lot of grenade launchers, but the grenade launcher in Turok, I'll just demonstrate for you right here. Um, I've always found it tough. These are awesome guns that we'll get to later. Um, it has that arc, and then it also bounces everywhere. But you can see the shape of the grenades that I'm shooting out of it. They're sort of like that separated pill shape that I'm walking through and not being able to pick up because I don't need them. Uh, so we're just going to go to the automatic shotgun now because the automatic shotgun is great. Uh, I notice, I always notice uh, when you have the automatic shotgun thing, this, by the way, is the area I was in before with a new thing. Uh, the explosive shells, they don't give you the explosive shells right away. They are way more effective, but it does feel, it, this feels kind of cheap. Uh, I don't think there's a way to switch back to the regular shells. Oh, I guess I'm technically on the ladder. Cool, that's good enough. Let's use the pistol. Shoot it! For no reason. Also, just just fire away, basically. So yeah, it's actually really exciting when the little two health things pop out of that thing, because it, it just is that way to boost you up past 100. I don't think there's an upper limit for the... Uh, oh, Perlin. Yeah, these things are badass. And when I, when I was a kid, when I was playing this, like, I assumed that everything that wasn't a person in this game was also a dinosaur. Or, everything that wasn't a person, and eventually everything that wasn't a person or a robot. I kind of ended up thinking that that was either some kind of gorilla, or that it was an actual dinosaur. It's not, that's a... They call them a Perlin, I think. Unless Perlin refers to something else. I'm almost positive that that's what those are. I also thought that these were real dinosaurs. I don't know what they call these. They do remind me of the uh, Dilophosaurus, but not really. Ah, you fucking yeah! It's that noise that they make usually, and the fact that they're quick and nimble. Is this where I came from? Uh, yeah. So, I'll turn the map on. This is the map. It, you can see how it, like, overlays. That's that's why sometimes the map can be a little bit distracting, but also super useful, because, you know, if you're not looking for an enemy like I am right now, because I can hear it, uh, it makes it super easy to follow the map. Yeah. It also makes it easy to make sure that you explore every corner of the map because it doesn't show you the ones you haven't been to. So you know which ones already you haven't been to as soon as you shoot this guy in the face. Uh, so that's the map. I think we're almost... This is a short cave, so... There's much, much uh, larger and somewhat funner caves later on, even in the first couple levels. There's a big one. Jeez. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so the other controls are just uh, A and B cycling. Let's go with this one. So yeah, that's the whole thing. Are they supposed to be kind of like frog things as well? Is that what they're supposed to be? We'll turn the map off. I, I just looked at it like in the face and I was, just realized that that's kind of what it looks like. So maybe they're supposed to be some kind of frog hybrid.
we uh, stop and try and look at these things before they, oh, they disappear. Um, I think the the graphics for this one are uh, just really really good. I mean, I like obviously we're dealing with a lot of distance fog, and even this up here, I mean, I'm not sure what that's all about. I think it's supposed to be there as a visual effect, but um, spiritual invincibility. So obviously we're already invincible, but basically there's a, this is the power up in the game that turns you invincible for a short period of time, and also everything starts to move super slow except you. So you can uh, there is a part of this uh, that you can have this turned on all the time. So like I can shoot the shit out of that thing and it won't even go anywhere by the time I'm done with it. Um, but look at this guy, look at this guy before he disappears, look at all the blood and everything and everything like that, and... I mean, it's a good looking model, right? I think it looks good. I always liked, uh, this is the point where we'll, we'll like, cycle through the weapons and everything, like, I, I think the weapon designs, when you're holding them in your hand, are really good, like, that's the automatic shotgun, and then some of the other weapons, this is the assault rifle, which... Always looked really, really small to me when I was a kid, but basically, if you looked at it from the side, uh, it is basically de designed uh, as an AK-47. So it makes a little more sense. This is the pulse rifle. Uh, you get this from the first boss, um, and that's. I mean, there's not much else to that one. This is the minigun. This, when I was a kid, I would just warp right to the final boss, the campaigner, and just eat into him with that over and over again because I had perfect ammo, uh, infinite ammo. This is a grenade launcher, which we already saw. This is the, uh, one of these is just called the alien weapon. Uh, it's this one. So what it does is it kind of like shoots this energy ball that then explodes. And I think it's more effective when you have more people. But yeah, it's a big, fun-looking ball of light explosion. I don't think it launches the dinosaurs. Oh, there it is. I was wrong. Thought he would have already gone flying. Boom. Oh my god. Alright, what else? And there's the uh, rocket launcher. This is just big. And that's that's when we, this is when we're starting to get into the uh, overkill portion of the weapons. So like you can go through the whole game using just this rocket launcher. Gets a little bit a little bit much. Uh while we're at it, why don't we also check the key screen? So you can see um we're in level one and there's three keys to level two, which are the the three circles thing right there. It looks like brass knuckles. And then there's three more keys in this level that go to level three. Um, when we get to the end of this level, we're basically going to be at the what's called the hub ruins. And that's the point that you return to that allows you to work to the other levels when you've collected all the keys. This is the... Uh... Shit, I forget the, the name of this one. I, I think it's... It's like the particle... Oh, I can't remember the name of it. But what you see it does is it freezes them, freezes your enemy until they just explode into a million pieces. So it's super satisfying to watch. I can't remember. There's like two names for this thing too. I can't remember. I was just reading on it earlier. That one I missed. Oh shit. Kill him. Alright. This is... This has a proper name, but uh, I always prefer to call it the nuke cannon or something like that. Something that had the word nuke in it, basically, because it shoots a big ball of energy that explodes and brightens up the whole screen. And then this is the other thing that you're looking for, which is that, uh, I think this is the thing on the far left. Uh, this is the Chrono Scepter, and what you're doing, story-wise, is looking for the eight pieces of this thing so that you can put it together 
and use it against the final boss who is trying to use the same thing the almighty chrono scepter for evil and his name is the campaigner which is not a very intimidating name but I'll tell you what is intimidating is big ass fucking beetles that jump up and shoot you in the face because when I was a kid this was probably like the most tense part of it because these things are massive I had to map button on the table and uh, I don't know if it's this part necessarily or it's a part a little bit later um, but there's a part it's where you're kind of fenced in and these things are like scaling all around like uh, this sort of like maze thing um, going, see the map helps, you go down in the water. Uh, so in Turok, when you're in the water, you can only use the knife. I think, uh, I, someone mentioned that in Turok 3, you can use all the weapons underwater. I think I was watching Clint Plant, and he made that note. Alright, that's not the right way. It's that portal. <laughs> See, they're big levels. I don't remember everything. Hey, I remember this guy. Portal. These will know right away if it's the... Yep, cool. I don't need that. Key. So level three. I'm thinking I missed the level two key, but I don't uh, remember. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Like I didn't play this enough to know. Ah, this is why you need the knife. Uh, but I love that effect that happens when you do use the knife underwater against things like that. Little blood droplets that just shoot away. This game, I mean, for this system, this is a violent game. Uh, forget Mortal Kombat and Killer Instinct, like, barring those two, this was, this was your mature game, right here. Okay. Alright, yeah, that's a dead end. It just spawns more. Um, and this is the game that it needed because this wasn't a port, this wasn't anything like that, like Mortal Kombat and Killer Instinct was. This is the kind of first mature game specifically for this console. So if you ask a lot of people, this kind of helped it out a lot. And that's why, um, despite this being actually one of people's favorite games and a, a really big game for the console, it's not particularly expensive because it's sold incredibly well. This was a system seller for the most part. Uh, it took a little bit longer to get out like most N64 games did at this time or even through its entire lifespan. Uh, if the system had launched with this, it would have been amazing. Uh, or at least launched with it in the first like three or four months. But this came out, uh, I think we're working with three games that came out uh, apparently on February 28th, 1997, which was Blast Core FIFA in this that I just played. And this is the part I was talking about. Uh, I think part of why this was so tense for me as a kid, um, at least at one particular point, I had just seen uh, The Mummy. <laughs> Not on, not on the big screen or anything like that, but I had watched The Mummy uh, with, uh, with Brendan Fraser. Fra Frazier. Um, <laughs> and the scarab beetles actually kind of scared the shit out of me because they're already creepy enough for being uh, foreign creepy bugs. But uh, I think one part in particular, if I'm even remembering it right or wrong or something, I might not be, but uh, the other guy who, who goes in the into the tomb with Brendan Fraser and uh, he gets he gets the beetle under his under his skin, and they have to cut it out of him, and that was that was tough. Uh, 
that freaked me out as a kid. So I just I kept thinking of that whenever I saw those things, especially in that point when we're in like a, a cave with those fences in it. Yeah, it was not not good. Freaked the shit out of me. You may have noticed that there's no uh, targeting reticle in this. I think they were just generally at a point for first person shooters where that wasn't a thing. They kind of just gave you credit if you got it in the general vicinity because I'm pretty sure uh, GoldenEye doesn't have it either unless you hold down the right shoulder button. Yeah, it's, it's the funny thing that first person shooters in a way just generally got harder which is why they had to put in the targeting thing. That's a bottomless pit. That's what that is. Because they were going to be harder on you. Oh, that's not right. That would have hurt me very badly if I wasn't using an insert. Alright, what's down there? Map. So, uh, when we get to Turok 2, it's got the 100th uh, life point thing. I feel like you actually should have gotten that a long time ago. With this level. Um, oh, there it is. That's, I remember this. It's there. More stuff. <laughs> He's up there, isn't he? There's two of them. Yeah. Um, with Turok 2, I remember trying to play Turok 2 uh, the first time I ever played it, which was again when I was like, you know, 18 or something like that. It was the first time I ever got my hands on a copy of Turok 2. And I, uh, I went at it without any cheats or anything like that, trying to do it right and, and just beat, beat, I actually beat the game. Uh, and basically every level felt like I I missed something important. I need to go back and do it. I think it's even worse in Turok 2 than I feel like. Um, knowing that you have to go back and do shit. Getting, to, and I mean getting to the end of a level and knowing that you missed something. It's not the right way. Let's keep taking this again. Fuck off! It's gonna keep respawning, which is gonna distract me. <laughs> that. I don't. Oh, shit, how do you. It's that portal in the middle, I know it is. I feel like I'm missing something on the way I get up there. It's on the ground. Oh, okay. It went right through the ladder, I guess. Doesn't matter. Portal! What? Oh, no! Oh, oh. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Is anything over here? Nope. Get that a quick ladder climb. I think I will say, it controls very smoothly. Maybe this is because I've always. Uh... Oh, wait. Yay! Yep, I was supposed to go down there. Not a bottomless pit. I think you take fall damage though. You should take fall damage. So, whatever. We'll never know. You can always follow these things if you feel like you're lost. Yep. 
that's really annoying when you uh, when you're playing this game is having to get up out of the water and then shoot those things right away because they're waiting for you that sucks let's have some fun with the explosive shells for a little bit Yay! Level 3. So there's two keys left. I might have missed one. I'm not 100% sure that I did. But maybe I missed two. I don't know if those go in order. Yep, and that was the thing that I kept trying to jump to, which I wasn't supposed to. Oh, yep, now we're at the hub room. So I missed two keys on this level. Um, and as, but as you can see, these are long ass levels, and there's only eight of them. But that's because they're they're long as all hell, and they're all very different. Um, I think the greatest similarity that comes within two levels is that the jungle looks a bit like the Hub Ruins level, which is this one, the first level. Other than that. So yeah, access to level 2, the jungle. Oh, that's level 7. So yeah, only two keys in there. So yeah, that portal opens up. Level 4. This is 8. You can read. Where's the 3? I'm gonna put the... Three. Yeah, so one more for three, one more for two. Which means I have to go back, consult the poorly made, hastily written late 90s book from Prima, and get back to you on another level. One that I have much less experience with because I've played the first level tour a million times. Of course, forgetting a few things here and there because they're so the levels are so large but yeah I think this was there's the safe point there oh did I, damn it hold on this is a weird confusing yeah save over that Thank you. Alright. This means... I'll catch you next time with this. And I will have some more keys to get to later levels. I might just go to level 3 or 4 or something like that next time. But I'm glad that we're on a game that I know well. Ish. So until next time... Which program do I use?